Welcome to the NGIT website and math podcast. My name is Vanessa and today I'll be covering squaring a binomial sum or difference. So another trick, so to speak, to, um, to multiply binomials without using the FOIL method is before we had used doing the product of the sum and difference when the signs alternated. But then there's another trick you can use when the binomials have the same two expressions and when the sign is exactly the same and you're just squaring it. So what I mean is if we were to have the expression a plus b and the whole quantity squared, there's no reason not to go through the entire FOIL method but just simply remember that when you're squaring it it's, it equals the first term squared plus two times the product of each term or so two times a times b plus the second term squared. So following this formula, and again with all other formulas in, in polynomials, the more times you do it, the more like second nature this is going to become. So don't think of it as something else you have to memorize, but just think of it as another shortcut. And this is when, with a binomial sum. And later we're going to do it with the binomial difference. But the a plus b squared is the we'll call it the generic form of of a binomial. So let's do an example. Say we had the example 2x plus 3 quantity squared. Best thing to do first is let's just apply the formula. So it's the first term squared. So it's 2x squared. And whenever you're squaring expressions, be sure to put parentheses around the entire expression and then square it. Because that way you'll remember that you have to square each piece as opposed to just squaring the x or just squaring the 2. So then the next part is plus 2 times each term. So it's 2 times 2x times 3. And then finally it's the second term squared. So it's just simply 3 squared. So now we just have to get rid of the parentheses, multiply everything together, and simplify. So 2x squared, don't forget you have to square both the 2 and the x, so that should give us 4x squared. Plus, now you multiply all three terms together, so 2 times 2x is 4x, times 3 is 12x. And then finally, the second term squared, third term squared, I'm sorry, is 3 squared, which is just simply 9. We have no other terms to collect. There's nothing else to simplify. So here's our final answer. 4x squared plus 12x plus 9. Uh, let's do one more example similar to this, and then we'll move on to binomial differences. So say we had this. What if we had 3x plus 2 whole quantity squared? Let's apply the, the formula. And this is a good way to remember it to run it in your head. It's the first term squared, so it's, let me just erase that, 3x squared, now don't forget the 3x needs to be in parentheses, plus 2 times each term. So it's 2 times 3x times 2. And then the, sec the second term squared, which is just the 2 squared. So now let's get rid of parentheses and multiply. So 3x squared, if we square each each piece is 9x squared. Multiplying this, all the factors of the second term, 2 times 3x is 6x times 2 is 12x. And then finally, the last piece is 2 squared, which is just a positive 4. No terms to collect. Everything's complete. Our final answer is 9x squared plus 12x plus 4. Now finally, let's address 
what's known as the squaring a binomial difference. Now, squaring the binomial difference is just means that the binomial is in the form of a minus b squared, but the negative sign is what tends to throw people off. So what we need to do is try to get it to look like our original form, which was a plus b squared, which is what we're most comfortable with. And, by, and the way to do that is we're going to take the negative that we got right here and we're going to associate it just, we're going to push it to the right and we're going to sim simply associate it with just with the b and then that's going to leave some room to put a plus sign it and then that will make it look like the a plus b squared. So by doing that, we're going to get it to look like this. So it starts off the same and we're going to rewrite it like this. A, we're going to put the plus in like we know and then we're going to just push that negative over just to associate with the b, close parentheses, and then square it. See? So the, the negative kind of just becomes a part of the b, but in the same respect we have the, the plus, and it looks like the original form. Now, if we were to expand that, what would the, what would the if whole equation look like? Well, then that's going to look like this. So I'm going to just put an arrow here so you know what I'm talking about. So if we were to expand that out, it's going to look like this. Again, first term squared, so it's going to be a squared. Then plus 2 times each, each term. So it's 2 times a times minus b. And then finally plus, then the second term squared. So it's going to be minus b squared. OK, so now that we have it expanded, we can kind of detach that negative sign away from the b. So what we're going to do is, we're going to take, first we're going to take this negative here. And because it's all multiplied, we can simply take that negative and bring it over here. Now when it comes to this negative, we can't just take it out and detach it because we have a parentheses and it's squared. So we have to address that. So whenever you have a negative number and it's squared, it just simply becomes positive. So essentially, instead of moving that b, because it's squared, it's just simply going to disappear. So actually, this just becomes plus b squared. And then because we took that negative in the second term and moved it to the front, it's going to be a minus 2ab. And then that first term stays the same, a squared. So then that's what the equation essentially comes out to be. As you can notice, the only difference between this one and the original one was that the second term, or the middle term, is a minus 2ab as opposed to a positive 2ab. Other than that, it's the only difference. So we're going to do one example like that, and then you should be in good shape. So if we had the example, uh, let me think of a good example here. Okay. Say if we had 2x minus 5 squared. Okay. If it helps, rewrite it so that you force there, force there to be a plus sign in there, and we're going to push that negative just to associate it with the 5. So write a bigger parentheses, and then we're going to have 2x plus, and then it's gonna, inside the parentheses is going to be a minus 5, close parentheses, and then squared. Okay, so if that helps you to kind of see it a little bit better, then feel free to do it that way. So now we're just going to apply the simple expanded formula. So it's going to be first term squared, so it's 2x squared plus 2 times each of the terms. So it's 2 times 2x times a minus 5, right? Because the second term is minus 5. And then finally, the second term squared, which is a minus 5 squared. Okay? So now, 
instead of moving that negative around, we'll just take it a piece at a time and we'll get rid of the parentheses and square and multiply. And you'll see it's a lot easier actually. So the 2x squared, if we multiply, if we square each piece, is just simply 4x squared, correct? All right, so the second term, we have 2 times 2x, which is 4x. 4x times the negative 5 is minus 20x. And then finally, we have plus and then the negative 5 squared. And of course, whenever you take a negative number, square it, because the negative is in the parentheses, that's very important. Because the negative is in the parentheses, that negative has to also be squared. If it was outside, it'd be a completely different story. So that's why the parentheses, when you're doing any kind of expansion, are crucial to not making a mistake. So a negative 5 squared would just be a simply a positive 25. Okay, so we have no other terms to collect, and here's our final answer. 4x squared minus 20x plus 25. So I want to thank you for visiting the NGIT website. If you need any further assistance, please stop by the CAPE or the Center for Academic and Professional Enrichment over in Krupfrian Hall, room 200. Good luck in your studies.